You are listening to The Centropic Oracle, an audiobook podcast of science fiction and fantasy short stories that make you think and feel. Daughter of the Sea by George Nicolopoulos Magdalena could swim before she could walk. She could hum the songs of the sea before she could speak. When she cried, her tears were the salt of the ocean. She didn't remember her mother. Years ago, a storm had swept her father to the shores of Gallic City, baby Magdalena in his arms. Father had sailed all over the seven seas, but he had never set foot on a boat again after that. A carpenter now, he wouldn't stop talking about the sea. And yet, in all the stories he told Magdalena, He never once mentioned her mother or the shipwreck. Whenever she asked him, he just grew silent, until she finally learned not to ask. Magdalena's father raised her in the busy seaport of Galaxidi, with stories of the Yusuri, a haunted tree that lives at the bottom of the sea, feeding on the fools who dive and try to cut it, of Gorgona, the sister of Alexander the Great who catches passing ships with her tail, to ask the sailors if King Alexander still lives. Of Asaph, the giant who can drink up the ocean and clog the seas with his mighty black beard. She grew to become a young woman. She was beautiful, but boys shied away from her. Perhaps it was her big grey eyes that changed colour according to her moods, just like the sea. Magdalena loved her father. Still, when she was sixteen, she ran away from home to become a sailor. Girls were not allowed to be sailors, and so she cut her long black hair and walked to the port of Aetia, along the way stealing a boy's clothes while he was swimming. She found employment as a deckhand on the first ship she saw at the port. The ship's name was Panagia Spiliani. Her own name was Mikalios, she told the first mate. As Magdalena's ship sailed across the Aegean Sea during her first voyage, the sky turned black and thunder started rolling. Soon the waves were like hills, and the small ship was thrown here and there like a nutshell tossed about in a winter storm. They reached the eye of the storm, and there they beheld Gorgona. Magdalena knew her as soon as she laid eyes on her. She was tall as a mountain. Her hair was black, her face beautiful and proud. Below her bare breasts, she had the scales of a fish and the tail of a sea serpent, long and sinuous. Gorgona fixed her eyes on the seamen, scrutinizing them. She was terrible and magnificent, Her eyes were like the sea, wise and angry and beautiful beyond reason. The ship's captain, Capitan Giannis Gavalos, was an old sea wolf who knew all there was to know about Gorgona. He'd never met her himself, but back when he had been a young deckhand, he'd served under a captain who had faced Gorgona and lived to tell the tale. Capitan Giannis waited for the inevitable question. But, to his astonishment, it never came. In all the tales he'd ever heard, Gorgona had hastened to ask, Does King Alexander still live? But now, she just kept staring at them, silent, terrible wrath blazing in the edges of her eyes. In the end, Capitan Giannis decided there was no point in waiting any longer and he had to take the matter into his own hands. O mighty Gorgona, he shouted, above the howling of the wind. King Alexander lives, and he reigns, and he rules the world. Trembling, he confronted her with an expression as solemn as he could manage. She grew terrible to behold. Her eyes burned. Her voice was a thunderstorm. Liar! she shouted. I know that my brother is dead and has been so for two thousand years. All captains had lied, but my mortal lover told me of his death. For years I grieved, 
Yet in the end I came to accept it. Then I realized that while I was lost in my grief, the wretch had left me, taking my daughter with him. I want my daughter back. Tell me where she is or I will sink your ship and drown you all. Ashen-faced, the captain looked at her. I don't know where your daughter is, Gorgona. I didn't even know you have a daughter. Liar, she shouted. All men are liars. She coiled her tail around the ship and squeezed. Timber started to creak, ready to break apart. A wild impulse seized Magdalena. While the ship rocked and swayed, she began to climb the main mast. Many times she almost fell as the mast, along with the ship, was jerked around. But she held on, and inch by inch, she managed to climb upwards. Hey, Mikalio! shouted the seaman from below. Are you crazy? You're going to fall to your death! But she finally made it to the crow's nest on the top of the mast. Magdalena could look at Gorgona eye to eye now. Spare the men, Gorgona! she shouted. Then, please she whispered. Gorgona laughed. Why should I spare them, boy? All men are liars, like the one who said he loved me and stole my daughter from me. She squeezed harder. The crow's nest swayed like a willow in the wind, but the girl held fast. She stared at Gorgona's angry eyes. They were gray like her own. Silently, Magdalena started to take off her clothes. She took them off one by one until she stood naked on the crow's nest. The seamen stared and shouted in amazement, but Magdalena had eyes only for Gorgona. Take me, mother, she shouted, and she jumped off the mast into the water. The men of Panagia Spiliani swear that when the sea became calm again, there was no sign of Gorgona or the strange girl who had been Michalios. All around the Aegean Sea, sailors still tell the tale of Gorgona's daughter, though no one knows her name. Only an old man in Galaxy D knows. He used to be a carpenter. But now you can always find him in the tavern, drowning himself in his drink. We hope you enjoyed Daughter of the Sea by George Nicolopoulos, read by Alexis Koratash. If you'd like to learn more about the author and narrator of this story, or make a donation to them, follow the story page link in the description. Pledge your support to us on Patreon for cool rewards and to help us bring you more stories. If you would like to submit a story for consideration or apply to be a narrator, a link to our submission guidelines is in the description.